Hey everybody, um, we're back solving systems of equations and I know you feel like we solved them in every possible way. We have graphed them, we have used elimination, we have used substitution, we have done a number of things um, with solving systems. But now we're going to look at them in a real life context and we're going to talk about some word problems with systems. Um, Systems apply to all kinds of things. They can apply to shopping, which is what our first problem is going to be about. Um, they can apply to chickens and cows and pigs and how many of them are in the barnyard based on the number of legs that you have. Um, they can also look at the number of cars and the number of buses and the number of trucks and the number of vehicles you took on a trip. Um, and you can figure out what kind each one was. So... There are a lot of different options that we have when we're using systems, and we can use them to solve a variety of problems. So if you look at the first problem on your notes page, um, it is about Kristen. And Kristen spent $131 on shirts. Fancy shirts cost her $28. Plain shirts cost her $15. If she bought a total of seven shirts, then how many of each kind did she buy? Well, with systems, we've been working with X and Y, and we've had... Um, two variables, obviously, X and Y. So here, we've got fancy shirts and we've got plain shirts. So we're gonna have two variables. So for fancy shirts, we need to know how many she bought. So if we look at our problem and read it again, we know that she spent 131 on shirts. Fancy shirts cost $28. Plain shirts cost 15. And she bought a total of seven shirts. So fancy shirts, they were $28. So I'm going to write that down. Now these questions that are asked here, they are not always going to be there for you, but these are thoughts um, and questions that you should think through as you solve these problems. So plain shirts, they cost $15. All right. Now, I try to group these um, equations by um, the topics we're talking about. So we just answered two questions that deal with what? They deal with price. Okay, so if they're dealing with price, I've got to um, set them up so that everything in that equation involves price. All right, so how much is the total cost of the shirts? Well, if we look back, $131 is the total cost. So I'm going to write $131. Um, now, I've got to write an equation that represents the amount of money that um, Kristen spent on shirts. Well, we had how many types of shirts? We had two types of shirts. Okay, so if we have two types of shirts, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that F is going to equal my fancy shirts. And P is going to equal my plain shirts. All right? That just helps me to remember what it is I, exactly that I'm talking about when I pick those variables. They just help me to clarify things. So now, looking at that, we got fancy and plain. How much did the fancy shirts cost? Fancy shirts cost $28. So I'm going to call that 28F because the number of shirts that I'm buying, if I buy three, the total cost of those will be 3 times 28. So whatever the number of fancy shirts is, that's how much total they're going to cost me. So 28 times F. Now, that's going to be added to my total of plain shirts that I bought. Well, plain is represented by P. We don't know how many we bought, but we do know that they cost $15. So I'm going to do 15P because if I bought two plain shirts for 15 bucks, that's going to run me $30 because 2 times 15 is 30 and then we spent a total of $131. Now, 28 was a, a price, 15 was a price, and 131 was a cost. Those are all money values, all right? And they all go in one equation. So remember that. All the money values, they went in one equation. They all dealt with the same thing. This equation is all completely based on money, all right? So if you want to make a note, um, that this is all based on money. Please do. It'll help you remember. Okay, so moving on. All that's based on money. So clicking through. And how many shirts did Kristen buy? Well, we need to go back to our problem to determine that. So if we're going back to look at our problem, we see that Kristen bought how many shirts? Let's see. Looks like seven to me. She bought seven shirts. 
So Kristen bought a total of seven shirts looking at our problem. Now, we don't know how many of each kind that she bought. So we're going to let F represent fancy plus P, which represents plain, and that will equal seven. So we have plain shirts plus fancy shirts gives us seven. All right. So we've got two equations now. So if we take those two equations, what we can do is we can solve them using systems of equations. So if we go through and we solve them, the, the equation that I just wrote um, on the other slide was f plus p equals 7. The other equation was 28f plus 15p equals 131. Now, we've learned several methods to solve systems of equations. Looking at how this one is set up, what do you think would be the best method to choose in this instance? If you said elimination, I would agree because our F's and our P's are stacked up on top of each other and all we have to do is multiply. Now it doesn't matter who you eliminate. Um, I'm going to choose to eliminate P. So that means I'm going to have to multiply by a 15. Now we have to remember, is that 15, is it going to be positive or negative? If you said negative, you're completely correct because these two P's have the same sign and the key to elimination is they have to be opposite. So I'm going to make this 15 a negative 15. So now you need to distribute um, the 15 to everyone inside of the parentheses. So you get negative 15 F minus 15 P equals it equals negative 105. And then we haven't um, done any math with the bottom equation, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write it down like we did before. Now these are stacked on top of each other, so they are ready for us to um, add together. And so negative 15 and 28 gives me positive 13F. These P's are going to cancel out because negative 15 plus 15 gives me 0. And then 131 combined with a negative 105, and these have opposite signs, so we subtract, would give me a positive 26. So once we get here, we're going to divide by 13, and F equals 2. Now remember, we're solving a system. If we're solving a system, we are definitely not finished because we have to go back and we have to find out what P is because we found out that F is 2, which means what in terms of this problem? Think about the number of shirts and what exactly this problem is talking about when you're answering this question. So then once we have that, which equation do you think would be the most beneficial here to plug into? The top one or the bottom one? I would say the top one would be definitely the easiest to plug into. They would both work out fine, fine but um, the top one is definitely going to work out much easier. So if I have F plus P equals 7, we know that F actually equals 2. So I'm going to substitute in 2. And then once I do that, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So P equals 5. And yes, I do know that plenty of you saw this in your head before I wrote that down. So if P equals 5 and F equals 2, in terms of this problem, Kristen bought how many fancy shirts? 2. So two fancy shirts. And five plain shirts. That will be your solution. Now, 
this does change it up a bit because we're not writing it as a ordered pair. Now, could you write an ordered pair based on a word problem? Yes, of course. Um, you would have to define who X is and who Y is. Um, but here we use F and P for our variables, and so um, we wrote a statement um, about what happened with Kristen Shirts and how many she bought. Again, these questions that I went through, they will not always be there, but it's a thought process that you need to develop on um, what is happening in the problem. Do you have one equation? Do you have two? In this instance, we have two, so we use the system because that's what solving systems using elimination, substitution, or graphing are there for um, when we have more than one equation.